When you are pursuing your dream and gaining success in life, to remain grounded, you should always remember your roots, which gave you the strength to be the person you are today. This mantra means the most to Brian Birdman Williams, the co-founder of Cash Money Records. Even though the music mogul has reached prolific heights, he continues to be invested in New Orleans, where he was born and raised in housing projects. It never, never came easy for us. Coming from uptown, if you be honored, that means you finish what you've been doing. I'm not finishing it up. Yeah. Man. Along with making multiple gestures like paying for no low residence rent during the height of the pandemic, back in the mid 2000s, he invested in his first mansion there, which he ended up leaving abandoned for nearly two decades. The reason why Birdman left his prized possession untouched for so long is part of a broader story. Back in the late 90s to early 2000s, there was probably no bigger musical act in the world than Louisiana's own Cash Money Records crew. From Lil Wayne to the Big Thomas, Cash Money was everywhere. What's up, Rock Ice, baby? We got this rap game on lock. Bling, bling, baby. Bling, bling, baby. New Orleans! Despite their regional success, Cash Money faced a number of setbacks. For example, Kilo G, Pimp Daddy, and Yellow Boy all cash money artists were murdered in the 90s. Desperate for success, Birdman and his brother Slim recruited Turk and Juvenile to create the new band, which they called Hot Boys, which also soon featured Lil Wayne and BG. This proved to be the golden ticket for cash money. In 1998, cash money ended up signing with Universal Music Group which offered Birdman and Slim a $30 million contract. The deal gave the brothers $3 million up front, guaranteeing them $1.5 million per album. But in the boldest move of all, they negotiated a deal which allowed them to own their masters. A deal that not even the Beatles ever had. Our early days just coming to the um, UMG building where Miss Jean Riggins really stuck with us still to this day, taught us how to work the system and how to be great the way we wanted to do it and how we wanted to do it. And um, and I teach that to them youngsters now, how to do it, how they want to do it. And don't get jammed not knowing the system. At the turn of the decade, it is fair to say that Baby was living large. Birdman has stated that he was buying 100 new cars every six months, which he would then give away to family and friends when he no longer had any use for them. I just like for my shit to be fly. I gotta have a red disc brake. Gotta have some chrome. Before I can even get in it, I need my windows tinted. I, mean, I just can't ride it if it ain't like, it got to be stunted out. He has also been known to sleep on a bed of money. Dude, you sleep on a bed of money? Every house I go like to. Like real money? Yeah, it's a million like, dollars in cash. That was one of my fantasies. And I believe in living out my fantasies. I won't sleep on a million dollars. It was in 2004 when Stunner made a grand purchase of a mansion in New Orleans for $740,000. It was the first mansion that Birdman acquired. Formerly owned by former NFL player Pat Swilling, the 10,948 square foot property featured marble flooring and glass doors throughout. And it boasted a four car garage. It had elevators and a master bedroom which had a view of the Mississippi River. Once baby moved in, the money to blow spitter converted the entire top floor of the mansion into a fully functional recording studio. The mansion was featured in the music video for the 2005 song, Neck of the Woods. And it looked like he was settling in well until something unprecedented happened that would change everything. This is a Fox News alert. Officials in New Orleans are bracing for the worst, bracing for a direct hit. The Category 5 hurricane Katrina is just hours from slamming the Louisiana coast. On August 23, 2005, New Orleans was struck by a deadly Category 5 Atlantic hurricane, which would cause extensive damage and be responsible for nearly 2,000 casualties and forever change the lives of millions including Birdman's. 
He stated to Jet Magazine that he lost five houses, 20 condos, and 30 cars in the cash money headquarters. Although it had been heavily damaged, his only possession that still stood was his newly purchased mansion, the monument of his success for the last decade of his work in the rap game. Birdman's beloved hometown had just been devastated by Hurricane Katrina. But that still didn't stop the Cash Money CEO from giving out millions to relocate families and friends who had nowhere to go. He and his Cash Money crew also performed several shows to raise money for relief. With his birthplace now in ruins, Birdman had no other option but to abandon the mansion and relocate with the crew to Miami. A move which would later be the catalyst for birthing a new generation of megastars with the addition of young money. Now away from the floods and misery and surrounded by palm trees and opportunity, Birdman didn't know it yet, but Miami would be a permanent move for cash money. This would leave his dream purchase deserted in his city for nearly 20 years. The multi-platinum selling producer wouldn't even put plans into place to sell it or renovate it, but would leave it for urban explorers to roam freely to get a sense of the foundations of the rich gang empire. There could be multiple reasons why Birdman chose to leave the mansion abandoned for nearly two decades. Even though the mansion still looks in a fair condition on the surface, it may have become unfit for living due to the damage of the storm. This is unlikely though, as Birdman has hinted on social media about a possible return to the mansion. There is a high chance that he has received offers for it as it's worth around 600K today. But the reason to keep ownership of his residence likely isn't a financial one. Birdman's mansion is more than just a lavish property. It was the ultimate reward reaped from him and Slim getting themselves out of the projects. Situated in the same city where they once struggled, it symbolized the resiliency of the New Orleans people and stands as a beacon of hope of what can be achieved with hard work. The fact that he still has ownership of the mansion for this long shows how much the city and that purchase means to him. And maybe one day, he will make the mansion home once again.